The last time Pitt and Georgetown squared off, it was anything but your average friendly basketball game. Things got out of hand, and the Hoyas wrestled away another Big East victory from Pitt, 62-57. Post-game comments were as heated as the game itself. Uh, they should have been in my neighborhood if they thought that little bit of stuff was a fight. I think officials lost control of the game. I think John got away with his intimidation. Again, he's out in the middle of the floor. There's no technical. I walk across the line with 22 seconds to go, not say anything, and he's going to tee me after we have a travel at midcourt. And so today from the Pittsburgh Civic Arena, it's round two, Georgetown and Pitt. did some subtle things foremost in my mind was sean miller now taking it out he didn't take it out in the last game he can see the floor better of course they'll try and get it back to him and then the last the freshman to make the correct judgment all right bill students waited in line three hours to get tickets for this one it's the rematch pitt and georgetown and we'll have the starting lineups right after this cbs sports presents college basketball Today's game between the Georgetown Hoyas and the Pittsburgh Panthers is sponsored by today's Howard Johnson. We're changing a lot of minds. MCI, let us show you how good a long distance company can be. And by Mazda, bringing performance and value together. That's the Mazda way. Can this be you? This is how it jumps in today. This is how it jumps in today. This is how it jumps in today. Changing in so many colorful, comfortable, welcoming ways. This is how it jumps in today. This is how it jumps. Introducing a high-performance luxury sedan made the Mazda way. High-performance luxury sedans traditionally ask you to pay a pretty dear price. Well, that's not the Mazda way. Mazda's all-new 929 has world-class luxury appointments. It's amazingly quiet, solid riding, and actually outperforms those guys. Now there's less standing between you and a car this good. About $8,000 less. This is the Mazda way. Light Fighters, the new light infantry. No matter where you are, in the jungle, the Arctic, the desert, or the mountains, you run out of day before you run out of challenge. You know, all this talk about building your confidence might sound like a lot of hype. Let me tell you, hype doesn't get you to the top of this rock. Be all that you can be. Hey, Gal. What? The elevator's here. Find your future in the yeah. The first time I see a prospective customer, I ask them to write down the name of their long-distance company's sales rep. Most of them can't. Then they realize they've never met one. Now, I can go on about MCI's superior technology and quality and how much better our billing system is, but in my view, none of that means beans if we don't care enough to sit down with you and show you. Until you call, you'll never know how much better a long-distance company can be. MCI, let us show you. It is a sold-out Civic Arena, and we are expecting the largest basketball crowd ever in the city of Pittsburgh. Head coach John Thompson 
now in his 16th year at Georgetown. And he will start Perry McDonald in the front court today. Ben Guillory, the seven-footer. And in the backcourt, Charles Smith. He's been red hot. He'll play alongside Mark Tillman. For Pittsburgh, Paul Evans in his second full season at Pitt, going after his second straight Big East championship. And take a look at his front line that has averaged 47 points in the last five games. Jerome Lane will start at forward along with Demetrius Gore. In the middle is Charles Smith. He starts at center. And in the backcourt, two freshmen, Sean Miller and Jason Matthews. The officials for this game, Jack Hannon, Mickey Crowley, and Joe Mingle. And I can tell you right up front, this crowd is ready. Georgetown leads the series 17-15, and we told you they've won five straight. Georgetown with a big lineup. Of course, Jory's played well of late, Tim. Away, the opening tip is controlled by the Panthers of Pitt. This is the freshman, Sean Miller. Establishing an inside game. I thought Gore got away with the travel, Tim. Gore's been forced in the action a little bit more here lately. He's played well of late. It's really helped Pitt. Turnovers were critical in the first game between these two teams. Although Sean Miller, the freshman, had only one. Now, Paul Evans was concerned the last game that Jerome Lane and Charles Smith forced the action. They would like to go to them down on the box. They don't have it. Kick it right back out. They've worked hard on that. Smith hit the first one, 76% free throw shooter as you look at Paul Evans. Smith has led Pitt in scoring three straight years. Two nothing, Panthers. The rubber man, huh? Charles Smith. Charles Smith tries to force a pass, gets it back. He's resilient. He was banged around against Villanova. McDonald and Tillman into Guillory. Back to Guillory, working against Charles Smith. They got he may have walked, and he did. You notice Pitt did not come down to help out. They feel that Charles Smith can handle them alone. Ben Guillory, now the press. Home run. Go on the deep route to Matthews, and Matthews has it stripped from behind by Tillman. That's where they're great. You think you have a basket. Georgetown recovers the flex from the rear. Smith will watch Pitt now set up a half court offense. Jason Matthews for three. Rebound Gore. Georgetown has it. Smith doesn't have the numbers. Ball's loose, and they're going to call a foul on Jason Matthews. Oh, that's a tough one to figure out who fouled whom there. But you saw the offensive work of both Lane and Smith off the glass. Pitt's going to have to do a good job on that end. Something to look for early as Bobby Winston comes into the ball game. And Ronnie Highsmith goes out for Georgetown. This is more like it, huh? Something to look for early is that pressure defense on the full court press after a basket made by Georgetown. They may cross over that, that baseline, mm -hmm. which is a technical foul. Smith's the only one that will take it on his own continually for Georgetown. Tillman whips it around the right side. McDonald, his shot is short. Rebound lane. Watch for the delay guy. Do a good job of that. That's their high-low sequence set up, Smith and Lane. Man-to-man -man defense by the Hoyas. Cool. Nice step. They got three. Oh, they got Lane after the, the pass, pass, huh? And the basket is waved off. It won't count. Now, that little sequence, Jerome Lane screens down on Jason Matthews. They didn't do a good job in it in the last game. They worked on it in practice. They looked at it on tape. Lane's first personal second team foul against Pitt. Georgetown's normally patient on the hip court offense. Smith takes the ball away and gives it right back. Didn't need it. 
This is the Hoyas Charles Smith to Tillman. John Thompson now off the bench and wants him to set up the offense and go to the spread. He also likes to bring you out so he can holler at somebody. <laughs> Get their attention. John told us yesterday the atmosphere in this arena is going to dictate what he does. Good off follow by Guillory. Good offside rebound. Smith attracted to the ball. Ben Guillory able to step in. Right away the pressure. A hold. Good call. Oh, they got Gore and it was Tillman. Well, Gore pushed off after Tillman held it. It's always the second guy. We told you this game would be physical today. Uh, you, you mentioned on the inbounds, and we'll look for it. Georgetown has a habit of going over the end line. This is for two. Smith. You'll see a lot of off balance. Georgetown's first lead of the game, four to two. Bad pass. Now the key is not so much the passer, it's the people on the floor cutting crisply and presenting themselves to the ball. Pitt had problems with that in game one between these two. See Gillery down there wide open, they just don't look for him much. Gets his own long rebound. You see a lot of those. This one's for three. Smith. And a rebound, Pittsburgh. Down and through to Matthews. Good job by Winston on lane. They should go to lane down in there. Same play. Matthews with the shot. be a violation if you don't make contact. Man to man pit. Tillman. And it'll be Pittsburgh's ball. John Thompson said the other day that Bob Wade called and wanted to know why there's such a good offensive rebounding. He said because we're lousy shooters, they better go get it. Bob Wade, the coach at Maryland. And Maryland, the worst rebounding team in the ACC. Nice look. That's where they're tough. They'll read the delay man. That time there were only three. Third man was the delay guy. Demetrius Gore ties it at four. Boy, if Ben could give him some offense, they got, a, they got an offensive foul. And it's going to be against the seven-footer, Ben Guillory. Ronnie Highsmith will come back into the ball game, and Guillory will sit down for the Georgetown. Well, when, when you fill the lane, good things happen. The kick... Now you've got a fast break going, and you'll see Gore, the trailer in the middle. Good look. The lane's filled. Nice finish. Sean Miller, top of the key, working against man-to-man -man defense. Good deny out there. You can't play full court pressure unless you can play half court man-to-man. Tillman, excellent then. Sean Miller looks tight to me. Well, again, only one turnover the last Georgetown game, but trying to do everything completely to order makes it tough on a kid. Well, he's had one here this afternoon, and he was lucky to get away with two others. This is Gore. The drone lane. Off of Highsmith? Yeah. Good call. Georgetown plays a zone for the inbound pass. Jason Matthews. For two. Same play as earlier, only he was open and a shorter shot. Uh, Charles Smith has a tendency to reach. John Thompson said they'll go in, hoping to get a couple of early ones on Charles. Pitts staying with a man-to-man -man defense. Show him a little body job. Tillman inside, pump fake and scores. Really froze Charles Smith a pit. Tillman has two points. That's his first bucket. Gore, good. Nice pass. Oh. Gore wanted a foul. Probably should have had, had one. He's right, Tim. Winston on the transition. He's in the lane. It's off the back of the rim. Out hustling. Rebound Georgetown. Out hustling. I don't know how he missed the first layup, but he got his rebound and scored. Well, you know first that you've missed, so you better go get it. <laughs> but that little play freeing Gore. Great screen by Charles Smith. Chris Lane, a good passer. Elbow looks over the defense now drops it down Great. the drone lane taken away by the Hoyas. Good hustle by Miller. Alley-oop 
to Smith. There he is, Jerome Lane. The Bear. Well, great pass by Miller, set up the soft shot by Charles Smith. Lane able to complete. Lane's first basket. Charles Smith turns it over. Great play. The real play by Jason Matthews, huh? keeping it alive. Play, they got a backcourt violation nearly. John talking to Charles Smith almost cost him. Pitts on an 8-2 run. The crowd gets loud, so John pulls the ball out. Now here's a little strategy for you, Tim. He told us well, right, Evan said, we'll let them hold it for 12 seconds and we'll switch some defenses. Try and confuse them, make Georgetown take long jump shots. Down to 12. Looks like a box in one right now. Now they jump out into a man. Now they stayed with the man. They didn't switch the D. Maybe too early for it. Well, that's why he's the go-to guy now. Reggie is gone. Charles Smith is here. Charles Smith is so tough. He scored 67 points in the last three games. Well, Reggie Williams had the green light. Charles Smith does so now. <laughs> Side defense right now by Georgetown. Smith and High Smith and High Smith's hand checking. He'll be called for it. Can't play him out there. So with 13 minutes and two seconds remaining in the first half, Pitt and Georgetown are tied. Introducing a high performance look. I had to try this to believe it. Denerex tingles. Tells me it's doing more. Selsun Blue, no tingle. Both Denerex and regular Selsun Blue have dandruff medicine, but Denerex adds an extra anti-itch medicine. So long, Selsun Blue. Hello, Denerex. Billy D. Williams talks about changing times. <laughs> times sure are changing. A girl called me up and asked me for a date. Says she's making the dinner reservations. Says she's coming to pick me up. Well, at least I can still say to her, how about a nice, cool, smooth Colt 45? Hi. How about a nice, cool, smooth Colt 45? The power of Colt 45. It works every time. Both teams have had four turnovers early in the ballgame and pit on an 8-2 run. You can always contribute, Tim. Jason Matthews won't get an assist in the paper, but here, getting some floor burns. Great effort, of course, igniting the break, and Demetrius couldn't get it to lane early. Nice use of the rim here by the Bear, Jerome Lane. I suspect we'll see a lot of that this afternoon. Jason Matthews to bring it in for the Panthers. Once again, the zone on the inbounds. Bobby Martin in the ball game now for Pitt. It is Smith, good pump there. Bucket goes. Uh, Highsmith twice now has let Charles Smith catch the ball. Right away you're at a disadvantage. And Charles Smooth, of course, experience, great pump, and then the hang. Three freshmen on the court for the Panthers right now. Jason Matthews, Sean Miller, and Bobby Martin. Martin replaced Gore. Now, Ronnie Highsmith will go out of the ball game and Jonathan Edwards checks in for the Hoyas. One thing about Edwards, you don't say to him, play aggressively. He does that without being told. 76% free throw shooter, Charles Smith. Converts the three-point play. Pitt lead is three. Still man-to-man -man by Pitt. Darren Jackson to Tillman. Back up top to Bryant. Bobby Martin a little bit confused. Defensive hole is Tillman. And Jackson knocked that one down. A pick. Major League. Can't let him get in that easy now. That's the passive type of pressure by Georgetown. Pittsburgh will go eight deep. Oh. Smith ran away from the ball. You've got to see it. Miller looking for him. Fortunately, Matthews there. Sean will tell you he was looking for Matthews the whole way. <laughs> Bobby Martin has it rejected. 
at 6-3 on 6-8. Lane inside. And there's Edwards who gets his money's worth on each foul. A chuck. But right here, the activity. The nice pick, no question about it. Standing still, but uh, you've got to get some help from the defense. Call out pick or you won't have any teeth. The foul is on Jonathan Edwards. That's the 15th foul against Georgetown. The lead is one. You wouldn't believe No one really knows how your skin got sensitive. But if it is, try the shave cream with more advanced lubricants than any other. Gillette Foamy for sensitive skin. That's our dad. He's having problems again. We've got problems again. No baseball, no picnic, no trip to the zoo. If you've got better things to do with your time, buy a Toro. And for a limited time, you'll get up to $300 off. So if you know anybody who'd like to take us to a ball game? Or maybe the zoo. Which you like to go. Haven't you done without a Toro long enough? New Kansas! The sixth ranked Blue Devils take on the Jayhawks, powered by the All-American force of Danny Manning, next on the home of the NCAA Championship. Pitt will bring it in under its own basket. Charles Smith off to a good start. Five points, three rebounds. On the court now for the Hoyas, Jackson, Tillman, Edwards, Smith, and Winston. They alley-oop out of this once in a while to Charles Smith. Didn't get it. You better get it in quickly. Five got five. Good job defensively. The zone, you saw the scouting report. John Thompson had them prepared. Two people in front of Charles Smith the Pitt. That's the fifth Pitt turnover in the ball game. Man-a-man -man all the way so far by Pitt. Tillman looking on the lane. It's a Smith. Pass to the big guy, Charles Smith. Oh, he got hit. My goodness. Charles Smith showing you what he can do in the open floor, sacrificing for Pitt because he's playing center the last couple of years. Charles Smith averages 18. Billy already has seven in the first half. A true small forward in the NBA, Tim. Good Eric Jackson. Jackson. Gets it out to Winston. Winston will look over things and give it to Jaron Jackson again off the pick. Third shot. Bobby Winston. But you saw Jerome. He loves to go up strong. Of course, weak side rebounding. His forte. That's Winston's first personal. It'll be the sixth team foul against the Hoyas. Let's see how Georgetown. Now they're, uh, they don't play the end. They do now play the inbounder. They have a tendency to go over the end line which is a technical foul after a warning. Pitt breaks the press nice Pretty. times. Steps two. Great look by Lane. Martin should have put it on the floor. Edwards, nice reverse. Now Bobby Martin's been confused defensively. He didn't get back and play his man. Look at the feet. He's out of bounds. Now the rule is they need a warning. And the second time they do it, it's a technical. So far we haven't had a warning. Good luck there by Miller. But if you touch the ball of the man, it's a technical right away. And a little nickel dimer out there by Jared Jackson. Touch foul on Jackson. That's his first. Foul is on number 21. And now Georgetown's over the limit. Don't forget a few rough words were said between these two coaches down in your neighborhood. No question about it. No, no love lost, huh? Anthony Tucker is not here. And the term that we were given, academic rehabilitation by John Thompson, not the school and not the NCAA. John wants to get him squared away academically, so he is not here on this trip. And he has done that with a few players, regardless of ability. And it's only for the benefit of the player. He's just a freshman. Meanwhile, Bobby Martin at the line, he too is a freshman. Now Bobby's got to be alert defensively. Doesn't love practice, as we noticed the last couple of days. Likes to relax. Smith, very tough shot. Barry McDonald just extending fully, but Bobby Martin really presented himself to the rebound. At 6'6", McDonald's a great rebounder, though, and he's a position player. Now you see the shove, too. He's a smart little guy inside. And Bobby Martin not expecting the contact from Perry, but getting it. 
little little meeting on his hand on his right, this is this is the late well it's a violation the referee can call a technical john got a free timeout evans up right away special rules that's one of the hang-up paul evans has of course at the big east meeting in may paul may be calling you and me to have dinner with him that's what he the coach as well <laughs> the officials are telling him to settle down relax coach he just doesn't want him to get that free timeout. Of course, we saw a different side of Paul the last couple of days, right? Really, yeah. What a competitor on the floor, but off. Enjoyable. Showed us a little insight into the pit program as well. This is Winston for Georgetown. Pulls it back up. Perry McDonald. Perry McDonald was in a bad slump. One of 18 shooting, but the last three games, John said he's more, played well. Uh, more active McDonald. right there. That's what John said. He's got a flash. He's got to show emotion and work, and he hasn't been doing it. John had a talk with him, said, you're not a freshman. Relax. You don't have anything to prove. Just play. Have fun. Miller to Lane. Rebound Smith. Numbers are there. Left side. Winston. Great luck. Charles Smith. Of course, he's so tough. Beating that top guy with the dribble, he punished the defense. The pit lead is three. Good reaction to the trap. Nice pass look. underneath the mark, and he missed the slam dunk. Bobby, please wipe the egg off. Put the ball in. Oh my! <laughs> he will get reamed by the former Navy mentor. <laughs> Well, maybe in Atlantic City, where Bobby played, the rims were a little smaller or shorter. Paul says, if you're going to go up, Bobby, just make the shot. This is Tillman. Good penetration. They got a bump outside. Good motion. I guess Jason Matthews got caught up there. Way out front. Matthews will be called for the personal. That's his second. Now here's a guy you enjoy because he plays some defense, something you never did. That Ralph Porter. Darrell Porter is perhaps the best defensive player on the pit team. Now I thought when he came in the ball game they put him on Smith. This is Edwards inside. That's a shot blocked by Charles Smith of Pitt. I got a foul on Sean Miller. That's the kind of aggressive play you like, though, inside. That's the second block in the ballgame for Charles Smith. He had 106 blocks last year, averages more than three blocks a game. Well, he's in the top ten in the country, as you can see. Way outside by Tillman, banks it in. I don't know. I think he winked when he teed that one up. Bad pass here. Again, Charles Smith not cutting. That's their hash play. They put the two forwards at the hash mark and two people on the foul line. 8.56 remaining in the first half. Georgetown, which goes in spurts now on a 6-0 run. Good job by Edwards inside. Charles Smith falling away. Good job by Jonathan Edwards. Tillman. Short. Basket interference, goaltending. Sean Miller may have gotten away with one, too. He chucked up the big fella, towel and all. Starting to dress pretty good, too. Maybe representing the country helped Thompson. No Tillman, question about it. Tillman now has eight points, and it's an eight-nothing Georgetown run. Sean Miller couldn't step up any higher to negate the penetration. Jerome Lane got away with the arm. Lane's struggling inside. He keeps pulling the shot up short on the front rim. This, these two clubs, I mean, it's amazing the abilities they have and also the reaction to the basketball. The gum chewer. They're running T3 now. Signal from the bench. Not a real good scoring team outside on the floor right now. Charles getting a lot of blow. This is McDonald has a shot blocked by Smith. A Kenny knack of coming up with it. They got a charge. But a great block. Who ends up with it? Georgetown. The foul is on Bobby Winston. And that's his second personal. 
John is not happy about that with 7.45 remaining in the half, and the Georgetown lead is one. The news about aspirin is startling, but this even surprised me. New clinical studies show Anison's aspirin formula is more effective than regular strength aspirin, and that means better relief. Anison, a better aspirin formula. On the high mountain rangers, a search for a lost plane loaded with drugs. Hello, boys. It's Robert Conrad against ruthless smugglers to save his son. Saturday. A capacity crowd in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Tim Brandt and Bill Raffrey with you. The lead is one. Georgetown on an eight-nothing spurt here. And Pittsburgh shooting just 39%. They've missed their last four field goal attempts. Everybody played man-to-man -man there except the inbounder. Another set they used and worked on yesterday. Charles Smith steps up for the ball. Paul Evans and the coaching staff telling us that Jerome Lane gets tired about this time of the game. Good play by Edwards. Lost out of bounds by the Hoyas. But he said Jerome Lane gets mentally and physically fatigued about this time. They have to sit him down about eight minutes left in the half. 7.40, 7.30, something like that. Well, he works both ends, so uh, particularly on the glass. So it is fatiguing. But they didn't take him out of the ball game. He's still in the lineup. This is Miller for three. Uh, he's been lighting it up for them. Didn't play well against Providence, but uh, that's the only bad one this year. Zone. 47% from three-point range. Miller. This is Tillman for three. 2-3. Two, three. They didn't match up. Mark Tillman made them pay. Tillman has 11 points now. So everybody has a man except on the inbounder. That leaves Dwayne Bryant to be the free safety back here. This is the pressure. Gets it to Jason Miller. Matthews right there. His shot is blocked. Great effort by Tillman. Jason will learn. He get it off quickly against Georgetown. Pitt with three freshmen still in the ball game. Smith with a the rebound. They're going to call Jerome Lane, and he better be careful. He, he made close. the technical. He sure was. He got a second look. Well, what's oh, tough when you play Georgetown is there's a lot of interaction, and you try and retaliate. You normally get caught. So much of the action is away from the ball. Good job by Edwards, though. That's why they have three guys out there, huh? Some Aaron, nights you need more against the highest. Aaron Jackson and Ronnie Highsmith. Charles Aaron Smith in the game Williams. along with Tillman, Jackson, Perry McDonald, and Ronnie Highsmith now for Georgetown. 2-3. Now, John said they'll try and get Smith on a wing. He was very successful at the point against Villanova. Way outside, perimeter basketball by the Hoyas. So much for John's scatter report. Nice hands by Miller to Matthews right side. And he has it rejected. Highsmith up big. Numbers aren't there, Charles. He forces it anyway. And it's walk, walk. Walk. It was three on three. He didn't have the numbers. He should have just pulled it Absolutely. up and Absolutely, but that's his game on the fly. Penetrate. He's got the right to do it. Smith has it batted away, gets it back. John likes to get a couple of turnovers, then the emotional level goes up, whether it's home or away. They start smelling at Georgetown. Long dry spell for the Panthers. He lane high and Smith low. That's when they're most effective. Pitt hadn't scored in two and a half minutes. three that's what his dribbling does you back up to take away the penetration and charles pulls up quickly nails it he's got an interesting shot though he doesn't square up to the basket he's always falling toward it or side to side well that body though it's got to be interesting slight he gets banged around no question Jackson with the step in. Jerome's struggling though offensively. Yeah, he is. He seems to be, maybe it is the fatigue factor at this point. 
I asked John which defense would he prefer playing all 40 minutes. He said man. And he has played man other than on the inbounds. Well, that way they can force the action and up-tempo the game. They like to step in the passing lanes and create havoc for the opponent. Bobby Martin, and Jason Matthews are out of the ball game now. Demetrius Gore checks in with Darrell Porter. Lane is only a 62% free throw shooter. He made some strong statements that they should be in the final four. A lot of work to do before that. Jerome doesn't lack for confidence. Georgetown lead is four. He's taken away by Demetrius Gore. Georgetown, a lot of motion. Charles Smith will dribble, penetrate, more so than any other Hoya. Crowd comes alive now. Smith for three. <laughs> Fight for the rebound. One thing about John, if that was any other player on that team, he'd be yelling and screaming and probably be sitting on the bench. Get the hook. Not for Charles Smith. The lead is two. Good. It is. Try the shave cream with more advanced lubricants than any other. Gillette Foamy for sensitive skin. After scrupulous examination, a leading consumer publication called it the best car we've ever tested. Road and Track judged that it may be the best sedan in the world. Worth every penny, concluded Auto Motor and Sport. The Mercedes-Benz 300E. Now that it's astonished the experts, let it astonish you. The Georgetown lead is two with four minutes remaining. The half coming up at halftime, Jim Lampley will be joining us from Kansas. Right now, let's check in with Jim for a preview look. All right, thanks a lot, Tim. Coming up on the College Basketball Report, we'll take a look around the country to see what's going on elsewhere in college basketball with scores and highlights. Why Larry Brown still insists that Kansas is home sweet home and King Richard Petty is back and well on the stock car racing circuit. That's coming up at halftime. Now let's go back to Pittsburgh. Jim, with 10.23 to go, Pitt led 21 to 14. But in the last six minutes, Georgetown's been on a 14 to 5 run. Double screen. Set play. Nice call from the bench. Gets Charles Smith away from the hole. That ties it at 28. Once again, man, and then motion by Georgetown. A lot of bumping and grinding going on down low. Lane and Perry McDonald. A couple of tough customers. Charles Smith. McDonald has the shot, doesn't take it. Jaron Jackson will. That's Jackson's first basket of the game. Georgetown doing it all on the offense, though. They're not getting a lot of steals or deflections on the pressure. Miller for three. Nice play by Charles Smith. He drew the traffic, dumped it back. Sean Miller presented a passing lane. Smith has 11 points. He's got a hot hand, and then he still gave it up. You're right, because the collapse came to him. He does have a great attitude, no question. My only comment over the years, needless toughness. 2.38 remaining in the half. Bad pass. I think Jackson could have carried it over the line. It was tough. Yeah, it was. It was on the road. A lot of kids don't chance it, right? McDonald. They'll give him that. But he gets his own rebound, takes it in, and loses it out of bounds. It'll be Pittsburgh ball. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Miss. Georgetown gets it. <laughs> That was a great line by John Thompson, though. He gets so many of those long rebounds because the team's a poor shooting team, he says. <laughs> you know that's not necessarily the case. Perry is one for five from the field. So he's struggling. Uh -oh. Pretty play. They run it all down. 
Man to man, little back screen. Gore sets this man up. Charles finishes it off. 33-30, Pittsburgh. Now this is where John's in trouble now. Who do you go to? Obviously, Charles Smith's the guy. Now they're switching to defense. Let's see what Pitt does. They, they've been working at one 2 2 matchup. The guys in the back are in man. We'll keep an eye on the shot clock. It's now at 20. Remember now, they'll go from this defense to about 10 seconds. They'll switch. Let's see if he'll do it now. They're at 12. Zone defense by Pitt at 7. Jackson loses the ball out of bounds. It worked. A little pulling of the string. Of course, returning the favor. Georgetown's done that well for years. Changing defenses gives him something to think about. Pitt on a 9-2 run in the last three minutes. Porter up top to Miller. Now Miller will call out the offense. Zone now by John. Georgetown a 2-3. Under one minute. Underneath. Perry McDonald saying he rode his guy out. John up big. Slapping the foot down. They... Boy, John wants a foul call. Read his lips. Maybe you shouldn't read his lips. <laughs> I had him one game where he used that towel to rub the words out of his mouth. 55 seconds remaining at the half. Charles Smith at the line. What a change in John, though. About a month ago, I thought he was lethargic on the sideline, wasn't into the game. The last couple of weeks, starting to enjoy this team, and emotionally, he's more into it, and I think it's carried over to his club. Smith's shot is short. Winston up top, 49 seconds remain in the half. Georgetown will try to melt the clock. So we'll keep an eye on the shot clock for you. Invariably, Charles Smith will end up with it at the right time. Still looks like a 1-2-2 two, two match. Now Miller drops back inside the key. You see the two leaders looking at the clock. One with the ball and Miller on defense. Charles Smith looking up for Georgetown. Under 10 seconds on the shot clock. Time for Charles Smith to go to work. Gives it to Tillman for three. Oh, was that drawn beautifully? And Great execution. We're tied. And that's the end of the first half. With our score, Pittsburgh 33, Georgetown 33. We'll be back with our halftime activities after this commercial message and a word from your local stations. CBS Sports presents College Basketball. Today's game is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. Saying goodbye to a car you've owned for years is a lot like saying goodbye to an old friend. But if it's a Mercedes-Benz, there's always this cheering fact to consider. Over the years, Mercedes-Benz automobiles as a line have retained a higher percentage of their original value than any other make of car sold in America. And that can make the sorrow of parting a little sweeter. Jackie Joyner-Kersey and many other track and field superstars compete in the Vitalis U.S. Olympic Invitational tomorrow on CBS Sports. This is CBS. 
To those of you who've been postponing your dreams of owning a BMW, your BMW dealer brings a ray of sunshine. A congenial financing program. So you no longer have to put your dreams on hold. 6.9 APR financing available for a limited time. See your participating BMW dealer for details. Believe that. Can you tell me more? It's not always easy to get to the phone. Okay. Sometimes you have to keep trying. So what happened at school today? And trying. Fortunately, Long Island's gas and electric company, Lilco, has 24-hour phone service seven days a week. So if you have a question about your bill or about service, please give us a call whenever you get a chance. Glad you're still there. What every woman should know about pap smears, Tuesday at 6 and 11. In Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Panthers and the Georgetown Hoyas are all tied up. But here in the wheat fields of Kansas, Students and fans are waiting already in Allen Fieldhouse for the start of this afternoon's battle between the Kansas Jayhawks and the Duke Blue Devils coming next on ABC Sports. Hello, I'm Jim Lampley in the Kansas locker room, and it's time now for college basketball's halftime report. Quickly now, let's take a look at scores and highlights of a couple of other games that are taking place across the country. Out on the West Coast, third-ranked Arizona is in Pauley Pavilion to play UCLA. And right now, the Wildcats have a nine-point first-half lead. That's a look at Sean Elliott capping a 9-2 to two run that gave Arizona and Lute Olson the early lead. Later, Steve Kerr, the great three-point shooter, passing down court to Joe Turner for the slam. Arizona at the moment with a nine-point lead. In Chapel Hill, North Carolina, the University of North Carolina Tar Heels are gunning for their 20th win of the season against Maryland. It would give Carolina 18-20 win seasons in a row, the longest such streak in the sport. And right now, North Carolina has jumped out to a big first-half lead over Maryland. LSU is trailing Alabama by nine in the second half of a game at Tuscaloosa. LSU perhaps missing a chance to move up on the Southeastern Conference leaders. It's been a rough week for the front runners in that conference. In the National Basketball Association last night, the Los Angeles Lakers continued a road trip. Pat Riley said it was important for the Lakers to show well in Houston, where they beat the Rockets in the summit night before last, and then last night in Atlanta. The Hawks took a big lead, getting 38 points from Dominique Wilkins and going up by as many as 17 in the game. Pat Riley without defensive stopper Michael Cooper out with an injury, but James Worthy had a career high 38, and Magic Johnson chipped in with a triple-double as the Lakers came back and got a seven-point win over Atlanta at Atlanta, 126 to 119. In Portland, Larry Bird was playing with a broken beak, but was as good as ever. Bird from inside and outside had 40 points, 13 rebounds, five assists. The Celtics, with a fourth quarter burst, put away Portland 124 to 104 in Portland. So with that victory, the Celtics continue to boast the best record in the Eastern Conference of the NBA. Tomorrow on the NBA on CBS at 3.30 Eastern time, you'll see the Lakers at home in Los Angeles against another Eastern Conference powerhouse, the Detroit Pistons. Last Sunday here on CBS Sports' annual coverage of the Daytona 500, you had a chance to see the greatest name in the history of stock car racing involved in one of the sport's most frightening crashes of recent years. When Richard Petty took this spectacular end over end flyer down the front straight, there was every reason to believe that the King might be seriously hurt. But in fact, Petty was able to walk away from the crash with nothing more serious than a sprained ankle and felt well enough to do a guest stint on Late Night with David Letterman Wednesday night. Now he's in Richmond readying his new car for this Sunday's NASCAR event, where yesterday our Ken Squire caught up with Richard Petty. What's it feel like to be back? Well, naturally, it feels good. Uh, you know, they asked you, are you sore? And I said, yeah, I'm just privileged to be sore because the uh, good Lord was with me to get me out of that one. Indeed, Richard Petty is back in business. You look forward to getting back out there and, and doing it again. That was just uh, sort of a freak accident that, that happens in our particular sport. And, uh, you know, you want to get that back behind you, get that history, and uh, let's go get on with the program. We join the many who are ecstatic that King Richard is back and well enough to race. One sad note from college basketball. Yesterday in Terre Haute, Indiana, at an Indiana State Sycamores practice, sophomore forward Rotimi Alakija from Nigeria collapsed and died, and the autopsy report today indicates 
cardiac arrest was the cause of death. Indiana state officials still trying to make proper notification of Alakija's friends and relatives in Nigeria. We'll be back with more on the college basketball halftime report on CBS Sports right after this. Or a 4x4 four four that'll shift the balance of power in the truck world. Toyota's all-new V6 4x4. Four four, the most advanced V6 engine in any compact truck. Unsurpassed horsepower. More low-down torque than any compact V6 4x4. Four four. New V6, now who's looking out for number one? Toyota. Toyota. Dentists warn, the number one dental problem isn't cavities, it isn't tartar, it's plaque, building up on your teeth every day. And no matter how much you brush, you don't get enough plaque off your teeth, especially in hard to reach places. The problem is plaque. The solution is plaques. Rinse with plaques before brushing and you'll remove 300% more plaque than brushing alone. Plaques, original flavor and now new soft mint, removes 300% more plaque than brushing alone. Dave, new phones come on Monday. Right. Computer Thursday. Uh, and I think we're ready for that bookkeeper. Oh, great. Does she load boxes? Uh, Dave, I got us the extra truck. <laughs> My partner, Santa Claus. You can't always prepare for success, but you can count on Ryder to help you handle it with the right truck at the right hey, time. What about a driver? David, you're doing a great job. Ryder. We're there at every turn. You know, battle drill, you need horsepower, firepower, people power. That's teamwork. Moving take, track front, 2000. This team uses a computer, thermal sight, laser rangefinder. Ah! Yeah. All that you can we win, the whole tank wins, the whole team wins, not just one person. Find your future in the army. Nine of our student athletes competed in the Olympics. Six of our eight baseball teams have qualified for postseason play. We've had over 100 All-Americans in men's and women's track and field. We had the NCAA soccer champion in 1981. We sent a women's basketball team to the NCAAs the past four years. We're the Big East Conference, a lot more than just men's basketball. A doubleheader of basketball excitement starts with Indiana, Purdue. Bobby Knight's Hoosiers battle this year's Big Ten power, the Boilermakers. Then Isaiah Thomas ignites the Pistons against Magic and the Lakers tomorrow on CBS Sports. We bring you back to Lawrence, Kansas, and look at the exterior of Allen Fieldhouse. In the entire history of college basketball, no university plays a more significant role in the lore of the sport than Kansas. Consider that the game's inventor, James Naismith, once coached here at Kansas. His heritage helped lead to the long tenure of Fog Allen, whose name must rank with those of Wooden and Ruff among the greatest in the history of the game. One day, the name Dean Smith will rank with them, if indeed it doesn't already, and the North Carolina maestro played on an Allen coach national championship team here in 1952. Five years ago, Smith was instrumental in helping his alma mater to secure the services of a coach who was expected to help sustain that tradition, former North Carolina assistant and Tar Heel alumnus Larry Brown. Brown has succeeded on the court here, but has never completely succeeded in putting to rest the annual rumor that he'll head elsewhere to offer his coaching services to someone else. When I sat down to talk with Larry Brown yesterday, those rumors were again the subject of discussion. Is Larry Brown leaving Kansas? I'm not looking to leave, Jim. I signed a new contract um, at the end of the year um, in April and told the people I wasn't going to the Knicks and I planned on staying at Kansas. Um, I haven't had another press conference to say that again, but um, we're at actively recruiting. Um, I think the most important thing that, that's going to come of this is when Danny finally graduates and leaves and I show up here next year, I think the rumors will finally stop. Is it possible you made a bit of a public relations error in tying your continued presence here to a commitment to Danny Manning? No. I think people just assume when he graduated I would move on, but, uh, you know, I'm one of the deans of the coaches in this conference, and, uh, you know, I've been here five years, so I've been in my job longer than yours, so, you know, I think, uh, 
it's obvious that I intend to stay. I think everybody has some kind of a psychological horizon beyond which they don't look. Some people won't look past a year down the road. Some people might look 10 or 15 years down the road. How far does Larry Brown look down the road? Uh, I look to tomorrow. I can't wait to coach practice, but um, I can't see where I'll be down the road. I would love to be in a situation where I could stay put in one place and people could start focusing on whether I'm a good coach and whether I care about my kids um, rather than them you know, bringing attention to the fact that I have moved um, and that I'm looking to move. And with Kansas supporters, if he stays this year while Manning leaves, to update one earlier score, Alabama has completed a victory over LSU in the Southeastern Conference, 72 to 59. When we return, it'll be back to Tim Brandt and Bill Raftery in Pittsburgh, right after this message and a word from your local station. Panicking yet, but uh, Tim is our major weapon for this meeting, and uh, I don't see him. I spoke to him last night. He said he'll meet us there. What, is he taking a different flight? He's not flying, he's driving. He is driving the 300 miles. He just bought a 190 class Mercedes. Says he's never driven anything like it. That's great, but why would he want to do all that driving when he doesn't have to? I guess that's the whole point. Porsche engine in the Quaker State Indy car performs at a punishing 11,000 RPM. And the clean running Quaker State with QSX that protects it is the same oil you buy right off the shelf. The big Q stands for quality, always has, always will. This is your executive section. Executive section? This is your welcoming gift. Welcoming gift? This is your newly decorated room. This is Howard Johnson? Uh -huh. This is Howard Johnson today. Dopey Gillis is back, but why is the whole town out to get Dopey? The brakes don't work. Dwayne Hickman, Bob Denver, bring me the head of Dopey Gillis Sunday. This is CBS. It is one of the largest luxury hotel chains in the world. It is one of the world's foremost producers of automotive equipment. It is a leader in defense technology. It is one of the fastest growing financial service companies in America. It is ITT. A new ITT. If you're looking for a company that knows how to build businesses into leaders, this is it. Sky of crystals, ribbon of moonlight. Out of the blue, a man with a horn appears. Make way for the shock of a new aesthetic vision based on aerodynamic truth. Make way for new Cutlass Supreme from Oldsmobile. Make way for a new aesthetic vision based on aerodynamic truth. Meals on Wheels, Arnold Diaz investigation, Monday at 6. CBS Sports presents college basketball. Today's game is sponsored by Michelob. So exceptionally smooth, the night belongs to Michelob. Pizza Hut, home of America's favorite pan pizza. Pizza Hut, making it great. And by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. And welcome back to the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We've had six lead changes in this ball game. And oh, baby, <laughs> has it been a sweet game. Uh, Georgetown shooting over 50% in this game. Tillman has 16 points, but Pitt's done a pretty good job breaking the pressure of the Georgetown defense. And I think Sean Miller taking the ball inbounds has been key. This is their stack offense against the press. They loop to 6'10", Charles Smith. But the beautiful execution, they've got the lanes filled and... Gore running beautifully, feeding him right in the middle. So they've handled the ball very well. And the execution on the half-court set has been terrific for Pitt. Here's a rub off the high side by Jaron Jackson. He gets burnt and pays for it. Gore with just a simple little play, but good Pitt execution. Ironically, as we told you, Georgetown shooting over 50%, but this is the ironic part. 12 turnovers for Georgetown and just five for Pitt. Last time that was reversed. Mm -hmm. And then you see the points off of the turnover. 
One guy who has to play for Georgetown, Murray McDonald, one for five, and he's really not flashing, showing the emotion that John wanted out of him. He's got to start perking inside. Biggest lead of the game for Georgetown was four. The biggest lead of the game for Pitt, seven. Six lead changes were ready to start the second half. Mark Tillman with 14 points. Smith with nine. Sean Miller with the ball. I think he's done a nice job running the show, Tim. Mature beyond his years. This is Demetrius Gore. First time the trap and it worked. There's the turnover we were talking about. Tillman for Georgetown. Charles Smith. He had the right idea, just didn't throw the right pass. He's shaking his head out there, Tim. Charles Smith, Mark Tillman, McDonald, Highsmith, and Edwards, who makes the basket. Pretty, pretty good control. He got tripped on the knee. See if they turn it up a notch. Georgetown. Billy Pitt starting its original starting five. Miller and Matthews Gore. The steal underneath by Perry McDonald. And he goes up once, twice, and is fouled. Dr. John Thompson, you're saying, there you go. Go after it. We well, just talked about him getting more involved in the ball game. He comes out more aggressively. Well, John mentioned the different levels. They front this time. They don't get it initially. But look at the rotation back. Perry McDonald stepping in. And, of course, the passer in that case made the mistake. That's Demetrius Gore. But the pursuit... The trademark of Georgetown. This is the first free throw attempt of the game for Georgetown. <laughs> no inside game. Barry McDonald, 54% free throw shooter. He struggled at the line. That's a good stat for Georgetown, the way they shoot free throws, though. You know, we were talking about how aggressive this Georgetown team is. You should look at Demetrius score of Pittsburgh. And that's because of that pass, Tim. Perry McDonald is a two-time Junior Olympic Golden Gloves champion. Steer clear. There, Paul Evans upset right away. The hook. Again, the fronty. You see Smith, the infielder there. Georgetown has outscored Pitt. Four nothing. Start the second half. Sean Miller gets it back. Trapping defense by Georgetown. They hadn't used that half-court trap at all. Right away they used it, executed, and got one. Bobby Barton. Working against Highsmith, the whistle on the foul against Georgetown. They can be over anxious, over zealous, huh? Narrowing there, Arizona, UCLA. Everybody thought that Kentucky Florida game would be for the championship, huh? That's right. Nice look to Smith, turnaround jumper. Can't get it to fall. Shot for three, won't go around the rim, and here comes Pitt. Smith got it right up. Miller, good push to Matthews. Now, Jerome Lane's got to work a little bit, too. He hasn't got the ball down in the box. He's got to become a threat a little. Lane, pitch, and power move, fight for the rebound, Smith to Pitt. Again, the ball's loose. This one should be out on Charles Smith. No, they say Martin touched it last. Near the conclusion of today's game, Bill Rafter and I will select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. Now, we mentioned Perry McDonald being active. He's got to move, now that the matchup sort of takes away my theory, but he's got to move to tire Jerome Lane out as well. Pitt in a zone defense. Up top is Tillman. 2-3. Exchange people, Tim. Try and make sure they recognize what Charles Smith has it. Charles Smith, seven points in the ball game. Penetration by Tillman. Nicely done. Well, he's come alive in late, too, hasn't he? Once he's again, today. Of course, when you score, you set up your defense. Tough getting it in right now. Pitt already had a five second call, so they've struggled getting the ball in today. I think they have to keep going to the well. Down inside, Pitt. Look at this. Oh, no. That's good defense. Ball, ball. Call the foul on Smith. Might be a little exterior bleeding on the fingers, but good aggressive play by Charles Smith. 
Jason's got to learn to split the two. <laughs> Step through. 17-29 remaining in the ball game. Georgetown leads 39-33. Finally meet Cindy, huh? Tonight. Good. So, first impressions are very important. I think. Okay. Now, imagine. Lights are low, the music's soft. Knock the door, the door opens up. Somebody's out there doing this. What is this? She's got dandruff? No, you have dandruff. No. Yes, you I do. I shampoo every day. You shampoo your brains out with regular shampoo. shampoo wouldn't matter. Your brains out? Yeah, well, so use that. Head and shoulders? Works for me, my friend. But you don't have dandruff. Exactamundo! Head and shoulders. <laughs> because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. My dad and I have owned Ford trucks for as long as I can remember. If somebody had told me uh, three months ago that I'd be driving a Chevy truck, well, I, I wouldn't have believed them. Well, I took a look at the new Chevy truck and they totally redesigned the truck and test drove it. That was enough to sell me on it. It's got plenty of power. It's got the Vortec V6. They've had tough competition from, from Ford and they've, they've, uh, they beat them. Who says Chevy's better than Ford? Ford owners. Chevrolet's done their homework on this truck. Sean Miller has been one of the keys this afternoon. Six points, two assists, and three steals. But he goes way back. As a youngster, he performed at half times all over the country. He was on The Tonight Show. He was on That's Incredible. He has a ball handling video out. And even as a nine-year-old, he can handle the ball with the best of them. Now, his younger brother, Archie, is doing the same thing at age nine. <laughs> and we're set to go. <laughs> and Sean says Archie... Takes a shot every time he touches the ball. Had 25 shots a game. He knows how to dribble, but he knows he likes to shoot. Four shot won't fall. Get off to a steal. 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 The second half, but Lane gets it back. Good reaction. Highsmith came down wrong. Boy, I'll tell you, he may be hurt badly. They went up big. Works hard. Well, he's walking. At first, the way he was grimacing, I thought maybe something had to pop down, but. Ronnie's an important guy in their press, too, when they get the emotion going. You know, he's not a talented inside player, but an aggressive type of player. And, of course, up big on this one, Lane, very alert. He's one of those step-ins by Lane. And of course, now Paul Evans is saying they're favoring with a timeout. Pittsburgh needed that yeah, last I, I don't know why they're letting them uh, go to the huddles. They did. They were they were tr uh, struggling. Jonathan Edwards into the game. Don't forget, coming up later after this ball game, the second half of our doubleheader on CBS, Duke and Kansas, and this game is important to keep Kansas postseason playoff hopes alive. And of course, Duke having a marvelous season, led by Danny Ferry. Great bounce back against K State by Larry Brown and the Jayhawks. I'm telling you, Billy, about how important that last bucket was for Pitt. They're one for four in the second half from the field. They have three turnovers. Ball trying to shake things up with the matchup zone now. Feeling the penetration and ball movement and motion was effective for Georgetown. 16.50 remaining in the ball game. And they got to favor Smith, Pitt. The Hoya lead is four. Good defense by Matthews on Mike Smith. This is the three. Didn't Ooh. step up on him. That should Timmy be an offensive goal. Yeah, good call. Excellent. Timmy, you're right on it. The ball was whistled off. That was going in, too. Charles Smith moaning, doing a little whooping. No question that ball was in the cylinder. They won't put it on the scoreboard. Oh, what a foul by Jonathan Edwards. But again, they were close to the five-second call, getting the ball inbounds. Nice screen. Four for three. His shot is short. Rebound, Georgetown. Three on one. Nice pass. Oh, oh. He had everybody looking right. Except for Perry McDonald, who scored. Now he's really come of age. Those skinny guys, though. Little step by Sean Miller, and it was the double up by Charles Smith that did it. 
That's eight turnovers now for Pittsburgh, and it's an 8-2 Hoya run in the second half. Bobby Martin comes back in. Jason Matthews goes out for the Panthers. I know you played some independent basketball as a youngster. Georgetown is like the team in the field that you don't want to play until the final because you just don't have an easy shot at pass. Very disruptive. This is Smith for two. Now on Smith, Georgetown will retain possession. Mickey Crowley right on it. Jefferson, seeing his first action of the afternoon. John's got those four centers. He's just hoping one guy one night will give him a game. It's Smith, Tillman, Edwards, Jefferson, and Jaron Jackson. And the steal by Miller? Yes. Nice, nice pass to Gore. Body, body by Edwards. And he's got plenty of it. I'll tell you what, though, he was in that twilight zone. He was right in between. He was close to being there where he comes back into the defensive play. Exactly. Uh, the uh, principle of verticality. Miller, good reactions here. We'll explain that next week. Huh? The good pass. But watch Edwards. He's very strong and, of course, does like to lean on people. One more time. It was what? Principle of verticality. You've got to go straight up. You can't go backwards into the plane of the defender. Demetrius Gore hits the first one. He's a 77% free throw shooter. Pitt thought it had an All-American candidate after his sophomore year. He shot 56% from the field, then went into a slump. But he's back and playing well now. Very innovative style. He had 107 assists last year. Now, Demetrius had hurt the ankle in December, and really just the last couple of weeks is back. Pitt cuts the lead to four. Extend the defense a little bit. Georgetown great at using the clock and ending up with something creative. John waving them back out. Push the... <laughs> that was more than a wave. Jaron, get back there. All parts of you. John told us yesterday he loves to do this on the road. It helps control the atmosphere. John usually controls the atmosphere, whether it's an interview on the sideline or you got a foul. That basket won't count. They're going to call a foul on Jerome Lane. He pushed Jaron Jackson. Foul is on number 34, Jerome Lane. A little frustration by Jerome, I think. That's Lane's third personal foul. Some players, when you don't score on one end, you struggle on the other. with the fresh 45. John's going to do it again. Loves to shorten the game. Under 15 minutes to play. You don't like to get to the end of the game behind the Georgetown. Great foot speed, great use of the dribble. Got to stay close. And great use of the clock. Mm -hmm. Shot clock at 10. Smith. Good play by the other Charles. Fight for the rebound. Miller comes up with it for Pitt. Long pass to Charles Smith. A nice pass to Gore. Who got oh, oh. To me, freshmen don't make gamble passes like this unless you're a real good one. Sean Miller looks up right away after being scrappy, feisty little guy. Terrific catch. But look at the unselfishness by Charles Smith. That's the body control. Edwards making sure, at least trying to, but Gore, the better of the two. The lead is three. Wake up, everybody. It's snow, snow, and more snow. When you're feeling a little under the weather, reach for America's favorite cold remedy, Chevy's S10 Blazer 4x4, with its patented Instatrack system and newly available 4.3-liter Vortec V6, the biggest engine in its class. Chevy S10 Blazer, America's favorite cold remedy. America's favorite sport utility vehicle. The of America. That's today's Chevy truck.
Working on Tidal and Beach I try to make some supper but I can't even eat Jump in the shower, watch the world from my back I gotta get you baby, that's a natural fact It's the night time That's the right time to make a bow. future, we invite you to learn the technology of tomorrow while you serve your country in the Navy of today. Two guards, one named Isaiah, the other called Magic. A matchup made in heaven tomorrow. The crowd is alive in Pittsburgh. 13.52 remaining in the ball game. Georgetown has four timeouts. Pittsburgh has four timeouts. Edwards and Highsmith have three fouls apiece. For Georgetown, Lane has three for Pittsburgh. And Lane gets tied up. Whose possession is it? Well, Perry McDonald says Georgetown. Georgetown and he was right. Some elbows there by Jay Lane. The Bear being aggressive, too. Look at this. Wow. Walt Hazard. And did he need that? That'll get your attention. Pick and roll offensive scheme by the Hoyas. Man to man. Their motion, Tim. Jaron Jackson now pulls it out. It's amazing without an inside game to speak of that John Thompson's been able to win. The will of JT, huh? John Thompson. Crossover move and pass to McDonald. Smith with a big Pittsburgh rebound. Forget it. Oh, oh. He missed the layup. Gets his own rebound and he's fouled. Paul Evans looking right through Jerome Lane. This is a great move. The offhand, everything but the layup. He wanted to make sure he went after it, though. Evans would like to reach out and grab hold. That is the Lane. fourth personal in Edwards, so he leaves the ball game along with Jackson. This is Smith. Go to work. him now for Charles Smith. Good job by Miller now not letting Charles Smith get it back. That would be the wise thing. Nice pass to Hosmer. It was a four-man game. Nothing fancy, just a pick and roll. Use the clock. Good look. A pin had taken Charles Smith out. This is Pitts Charles Smith with a power move, and he's fouled up front. Now, he gets away with the walk out there on that foul line, Tim. He's done it a couple of times. He gets into a roll, Charles Smith. It gives him a head start on the defender. Six, team five. Charles Smith with the line. Two shots. Highsmith was called with the foul. That's 16 fouls against the Hoyas. Charles Smith, 6'10", 230-pound senior, the captain of this team from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Nine points, five rebounds, four blocks today. Now the poor-headed center, Guillory being one of them. A lot of fouls to give for Georgetown. High Smith goes out, Guillory comes in. Paul Evans said he thinks that Player of the Year could go between Danny Manning and Charles Smith when the year began. We're tied at 43. 
Man to man straight up. That's a shame for Pitt. Bobby Martin may get the foul, but Charles Smith didn't see the pass. Lost his man. He's just saying to Bobby Martin, let me know who's behind me. Highsmith comes back in for the Hoyas. Guillory goes out. What do you think Guillory did wrong? <laughs> That was a quick entrance you know, last exit. year. Only really last year's game plan was he would start Ben Guillory, let him play for the first three minutes, and then take him out. They could have played in the 20s, right? The center jump. Because offensively, he's improved the last few weeks. Perry McDonald. they put on now. The free safety is Charles Smith. See him about the top of the key. And he looped past. It's his job. Gore and Lane are setting picks for each other. Instead, they go way up to Charles Smith. Pitt's got to get it down low again. Establish and execute. Good switch by Georgetown on Miller that time. Charles has got his guy. This is Gore, double team, back to Miller, he's free. Free! Oh, that's a play on foul, Tim. I think they should have let that go. I agree with you. Martin went way up and had the rebound. Good aggressive basketball, oh, nickel dimer. Well, you saw Sean Miller, what he does by making that jumper it keeps the defense of georgetown honest and boy what a quick swing arizona takes the lead back by two for perry mcdonald who was just called for that foul that is his third your alma mater struggling a little maryland was down 28 13 they closed the gap Tucky looks good surprise down there lsu this is bobby martin he's just a freshman but he makes a senior free throw. As you get to this time of the year, though, there are really so many games, so many practices. They're into their sophomore season. He was one of the most heralded players ever to come to Pitt. Yeah. Good step in. Block, but there's a foul. I believe they're going to call it on. Jerome Lane stepped in. And Winston out of control. Great read. Well, you need your help against the good offensive clubs and the lead by Smith to step in. Well, I'll tell you, he was set. The feet were planted. No Took question. Right torso. Nice, easy call. Good step in front. McDonald with a quick feet. Lane. So it's going to be called on Gore Pitt. But if getting it in tight, though, Pitt right now, getting good shots, much better than earlier. As the tempo picks up, and as play gets a little bit more aggressive down the stretch, watch for the quick whistles. And it also favors Georgia, don't you think? Any harried attack? Oh, that was not for Ronnie Highsmith. Lack of communication there. Big, big Hoya turnover. The unforced variety. We ought to mention the job that Sean Miller is doing on Charles Smith defensively. Smith has only seven points. He's been averaging 18. That's why he's at it. Get a little blow, get his head back in it. Smith, yes for two. In the tape, the pit coach has said the foul line is open if you get it down on the baseline or on the box. John going to the four spread. A 6 nothing Panther run. Four to score. Not as effective with Charles Smith of Georgetown on the bench. Other, other than nice steal by Lane. He's going to take it the distance. And he's fouled. That 
that's a man going to the basket, isn't it? First Georgetown, other than Tillman, didn't have a good offensive team at the other end. Boy, Lane, aggressive bounce. Nine forty-nine remaining in the ball game. This is CBS. Sales are great, but they're all local. We've got to get into new markets. We can't afford to expand, Dave. All you can say to me is no. I can't pull new customers out of a hat. Ben, that's your job. America's winners are at your Chrysler Plymouth dealers now. Get our biggest cash back ever. $2,500 cash back on Chrysler New Yorker Turbo. $2,000 cash back on Chrysler LeBaron Coupe. Or $1,000 cash back on Chrysler Fifth Avenue. Let your Chrysler Plymouth dealer make you one of America's winners. See your New York, New Jersey, or Fairfield County Chrysler Plymouth dealer now. CBS Sports presents College Basketball. Today's game is sponsored by Wang Laboratories. Wang makes it work. State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. The Civic Arena is sold out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And it is loud. 49-45, Panthers, 9-49 remaining in the ball game. 38 to 16, Pitt's front line has outscored Georgetown and they've been averaging 47 points in the last five games. Free throws, well, they're both shooting well from the line. Turnovers, 17 to eight, Georgetown, and that's unusual. Very, very unusual. Georgetown has to get something out of their press, Tim. Jerome Lane hits the first one. NBA scouts, Say they remind Lane reminds them of Charles Barkley or Wes Unseld in the body build and the way he positions and uses that body. He's got to eat a little more though. <laughs> Get into that category. He loves to eat. He lost weight. Well, there's some rumors about him. He ought to stay in school. He's got a lot to learn. Plenty of time. Misses the second one. The pressure now pushing the ball down and Charles Smith back in. John can't play without it. No, but the key at this end of the floor is Charles Smith is just three for ten from the field. This is their matchup zone now. A little confusion, but they're gonna give McDonald that one outside. Winston was in the lane, had the shot, didn't take it. Ball goes out of bounds. Hoyas will get it back. Now Sean Miller did not leave Charles Smith. It's not a box and one. They're trying to match up in the back. Miller doing an outstanding job on Charles Smith. Gets picked this time. Smith with a running one hander. It won't drop right for the rebound. And the Hoyas get it back. Terrific effort by George Stanley. I mean, there's so much smaller. A flyer by Smith. Perry McDonald able to come up and get a hand on it. Mark Tillman comes back into the ball game. Dwayne Bryant goes out for Georgetown. Georgetown has two timeouts remaining. Pitt has three. Great pump fake. Where Charles has improved so much. Under nine minutes. Zoned by Georgetown now. Out of this, they run some nice high-low stuff as well, Pitt. They get it to Charles Smith. He looks to dump down. Now, if you were Pittsburgh working against the zone, would you melt the clock? I'd wait for a good one. I wouldn't slow it down now. A little bit of a charge. Yep. Charles out of control, and he normally does not do that. And again, it was outstanding positioning by Perry McDonald. Oh, Empty trip by Pitt. He got the hammer with three. Pitt. Chewing that gum pretty good now. They put up a heart monitor on Paul Evans for one of his games. And it got way up there when uh, when Coleman blocked the shot against his ball club. Don't forget Indiana playing Purdue tomorrow here on CBS. 
contrary to what Rowley says, he did have a heart, huh? Hey, during timeouts, his heart rate went all the way down. They say normal people are sleeping. But, uh, by that, I meant Rowley messed me on. He had some words, and I just want Rowley to know that his heart did show. They detected one. Talking about that Purdue-Indiana game. And that's critical as far as Indiana is concerned. This is Smith for three. Now, Sean Miller should not have left Charles Smith. Excellent poise by Charles Smith then. Sean will know better the next time. Still even. Charles, that's Bobby Martin. Goes around the pick by Charles Smith, but he won't. Oh, wide open. He couldn't believe it. 7.48 remaining in the ball game. They really only have to tag two guys out here by that play. They're not Smith and Tillman. So Pitt's got to be aware of where they are, and the inside game will take care of itself. Watch the picks that Guillory's setting up top on Miller. Well, they, they use that against Villanova beautifully. Right, now here comes Guillory. This time the pick's on Gore. See him? He's uh -huh. just kind of riding with him. Well, they got to stay. That's right. Either one, Gore or Miller, has to stay. Shot clock's at five. Gets his own rebound. They'll go back with a 45-second clock reset. They kill you with the long ones. They just go after them. You're looking at your club saying, what are you, stuck? That's Guillory that John was talking to. John leads the country in timeouts, illegal timeouts. Turnover. Jerome Lane gives it up. Three on one kick. This is Lane. Great strength. No question about the foul on Winston. They may have to rearrange the basket. But that's the foul. Oh, it sure was. Smart foul for Winston. But Lane strong enough to hold off and put it up soft, almost letting it go down. Winston now has four personal fouls. That's a telling sign. 18 today. Their average is 14. They've gone up a little in Big East play. Though. And they dropped off a little bit in the rebounding differential. Mm -hmm. Although they're still third in the nation. And they're playing some bigger people. Lane one for five from the line this afternoon. Now they were disconcerting. And Paul Evans upset. No. Jerome hits the second one. Georgetown people talking and moving on the free throw. This is Tillman. Oh, blow by Gore. Left the luggage. It's a great penetration. Woo. First quick step. Quick and left. Foul is on Demetrius Gore. Fourth That's Gore's fourth personal. So Gore has four for Pitt. Lane has three for Georgetown. Winston, Edwards, and Highsmith all have four personals. As Gore goes out of the ball game and Darrell Porter checks in. Your fella, the defender. And after that move, that's what they need. Six so, minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the ball game. They were zoned on the out of bounds, and now Miller's calling man to man. They say it went off Bobby Martin. A little confusion there. They're lucky, Pitt. Now, Tillman's not supposed to get in there, is he, at that size? I'll tell you what, though, he went up strong and was hammered. Got to stay alert defensively on the inbounds. Foul is on Bobby Martin. That's his second. John brings in Jaron Johnson, Jackson rather, and takes out Winston. Mark Tillman at the foul line. Two shots. Mark Tillman, 6'2", 190-pound sophomore from Washington. Gonzaga High School in the District of Columbia. Now, this is where Georgetown is tough. Carolina's still holding on. On the miss, they don't shoot good free throws, they anticipate, so you've got to be alert. And Tillman gives the Hoyas a one-point lead. Oh, that subtle change.
change by Paul Evans letting Sean Miller take it out. It's paid great dividends. This is Porter, the freshman, working on Tillman. They want to get it to Smith. They do. Nice Good move. Strong effort. And right away, the reaction getting it down there with Guillory not in good stance or position. Uh, you love to have a senior who can take over down the stretch. And right now, Charles Smith, the guy to Pitt's going to go to Lane with great recognition, the dump down, and a little show of enthusiasm by Charles. Charles Smith has 15 points. Gaining on that season average. Just looking at it, you can tell he wants the ball. He wants to take it to the hoop. Seventy-six percent free throw shooter. Oh. He's six and seven this afternoon from the line. Five forty remaining in the ball game. Top of the screen. Look at John Thompson working the offense. Wants a triangle set up. past the Porter instead smartly held it up now Porter Martin with great position and the possession arrow belongs to the Panthers why did Bobby Martin seal his man off did everything but grab hold of the ball Martin now in the paint and they're having some words with Winston they went nose to nose very hard play today and no problems love to see that been well officiated yes 2-3, they're looking to match now man to man. This is Darrell Porter. Lane's got his guy. Nice steal by Charles Smith. Two on one. Smith takes it himself, followed by Winston, and there's a foul. That's amazing. Uh, Charles Smith looked to freeze the defense. Pitt played it beautifully. Really did. Yeah, but watch Tillman on the left side. He's wide you open. You think he should have given it to him? Absolutely. I thought when he gave it down. Now, Porter did not recognize Lane. He should have dumped it in. This wouldn't have happened. Charles, you're right, had a guy on the left. But, of course, the reaction by Smith, maybe not a bad hold on. And the hustle, once again, Winston. Charles. Smith goes to the line. Pitt says Winston should be at the line. Look at John Thompson say, Winston, get down there, get out! Yes, he, Winston started to move back to the free throw line. Now, see, this is where John's smart. He tries to take over the game. All right, here's the difference now. Winston is a 47% free throw shooter. Charles Smith is 76%. His mama didn't raise any dummy. So Winston goes to the line. And look at John Lackland. <laughs> He's not laughing now after the miss. Paul Evans was up on his end just to make sure that Winston was on the line. That's Georgetown's first miss this half from the line. They're six of seven. Rep's got the right guy, though. All right, Bobby. Don't forget, coming up immediately following this game, Duke against Kansas. What a game that should be. Duke second in the nation in scoring margin. Here they go again. Just cannot relax the gnawing ability, the tenaciousness. You've got to be crisp all game with the ball when you play Georgetown. McDonald. Martin with a big rebound. Very wisely gives it up to Sean Miller behind it. Murray would have liked that one back, don't you think? Smith is fouled up top, and it's going to be called on Highsmith or Tillman. Either one. Tillman reached in. Yeah, they were both guilty. <laughs> guilty as charged. But Charles Smith now reading well with his bounce. Yeah, they no call... traffic. He's putting it down. They called it on Tillman. I'll tell you something. That's a big foul for Tillman, too, because if had it gone to Highsmith, he'd be out of here. Mm -hmm. He has four persons. Instead, Jaron Jackson will sit down. So it's Winston, Highsmith, McDonald, Charles Smith, and Tillman in the lineup for Georgetown. 
This is Pitch Charles Smith. He's got 16 points this afternoon. They bang one another. A lot of sore bodies after a Georgetown game. No question Tillman and Charles protecting his uppers. Certainly smart about that, right? It's not built like Dolly Parton, but I'd wear a mouthpiece. He's got to protect himself. <laughs> Both these clubs can play defense. I mean, tough, aggressive defense. Hit in their matchup now. You see them pointing out to one another. Lane did not have McDonald. Now they'll give Perry that. Man-to-man -man defense. The big guys for Pitt sag in the paint. Everybody else tightens up out front. Now the two freshmen, Miller and Matthews, have their hands full. They've got to do a good job on Tillman and Charles Smith. Perry McDonald, a nice drop pass. Great work and the read by Winston. Winston just slid clear in the back door. That's what the matchup does, though. You get confused. You don't know who you're playing each time, and you get lost. Sean couldn't get the ball inbounds. Very wisely calls timeout. He had to call time with three seconds remaining. There's the clock. Once more. An employee pension fund, 1,000 phone calls a day through voice processing on the Wang BS computer. They upgraded from a Wang OA system. The BS access is an IBM 4381. Voice access in Wang office, WP Plus, COBOL for 71 pension administrators online. So the mainframe's operating as a file server? Yeah, we do all the integration. That's our edge. Voice, data, word, networking, human factors? Uh, human factors? Real people, when they pick up the phone, they're integrated. Integration's key. Uh, good point. So I'll open with the... Uh... Wait one second. I thought I was open. Listen to the heartbeats. Now you can save up to $1,800 on America's best-selling cars, Chevrolets. Get $600 cash back when you buy a new Chevrolet Corsica and save up to an additional $1,200 on option packages. That adds up to $1,800 in savings. Or save up to $1,700 on a new Chevy Beretta. Or get $750 on a new Chevy Camaro. That's today's Chevrolet. Spud's water my night with the cold Spud's light. There will be 16,000 on hand when the game starts moments from now at Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence. About 100 students spent the night outside the arena. And then some three and a half hours ago, the gates were open and they stormed in to get the best seats they could. They'll be part of the sellout crowd here to watch Duke and Kansas next. Now back to Tim and Billy in Pittsburgh. <laughs> We had that same situation here in Pittsburgh. Students waited in line three hours to get tickets for this one. Capacity crowd at the Civic Arena. That inbounds play has been successful. The stack and then the lob to Charles Smith. Lane, double team. Good luck. Drops it down to Smith. Mid shot, no good. High Smith. Pitt has used a lot of what I would call gimmick or junk defense. And right here, you'll see Perry McDonald. Lane is not sure if Charles Smith points him out. And Bobby Winston should be played by Martin, but the laps because they're in a gimmick defense in the back. Not enough communication. Georgetown made them pay for it. Now the foul was on Highsmith. That's his fifth, so he's going to have to sit down. He's acting innocent. He doesn't want to leave the ball game. Uh, can't blame him. Explain that to the official, will you? Now he goes out. Winston comes in. Well, that's the asset of having all these big guys. Jefferson Edwards. Edwards checks back in. Guillory. Jaron Jackson goes out. And Highsmith. Four of them. Charles Smith, 17 points, 7 of 9 from the line this afternoon.
Jerome Lane is an excellent feeder of the post. And you notice that time he got it to Smith. They're very good when he's high and dumps low because Charles is better with it down on the box. He uses his body so well underneath. Hangs the rebounding in all yeah, does. Charles Smith gives the Panthers a two-point lead. Still in the match. A tight fit ball game down with three minutes exactly remaining. Jerome Lane's all zone back there. Smith comes clear and hits for two. Can't keep him quiet long. Georgetown seems to be handling the gimmick defense. I wouldn't be surprised to see Paul come back straight up man to man. Arizona UCLA were told two minutes remaining in that game in their tie. This is Jerome Lane. Nice spin move. Straight up and inside. Great move. Georgetown giving up that low post pass more easily than you used to. Looks like a triangle and two. Now they're matched though. This is what they worked on, that one, two, two. It does look like a triangle and two now with the two guards, you're right. McDonald forces a shot, rebound Edwards. That's three easy baskets against it. The jumper gimmick. Fans wanted a foul on Mark Tillman. Incidental contact, no call. This is Lane. Nice pass underneath the door. They used it early in the first half. The rub off on Smith by Gore. What a dish. 138 remaining in the ball game. This is Winston. Double pump. Smith and Smith, and neither one has a call. Charles Smith and Charles Smith. And Charles Smith <laughs> with the foul. Well, he tried to stay up big, but earlier the gore, or the rub by Gore there as he sets his man up off Charles Smith. Very effective. Good execution by Pitt. Third personal on Charles Smith of Pittsburgh. Charles Smith of Georgetown will go to the line. Now Sean Miller has not left the floor. Paul Evans, I'm sure talking defensively there, what to expect from Charles Smith. Pitt sends Jason Matthews way down near its basket, and Miller comes back into the front court. Very unusual. Very much so. He'll nail this one in. He's quite a guy. Enrolled in the College of Arts and Sciences at Georgetown. 6'1", 165-pound junior. Game in and game out, he proves more things to more people. Ben Guillory, no match for Charles Smith, either getting free or with the dribble. And his namesake, selling in. They come back the other side now. Georgetown's Charles Smith, Miles Pitt's Charles Smith. Bobby Winston comes back into the ball game. Along with Jonathan Edwards, Ben Guillory and Jaron Jackson will go out. Norm Law, who's a great help to us, checking in with Paul Evans on what he wants on the other end. Charles Smith, 19 points in the afternoon as you look at Paul Evans. The Panther lead is two.
always some excitement. Well, when you need a big rebound, whoa, I don't blame Purdy for being upset. That Edwards could have been a technical. Yep. Bottom line is Edwards gets called for the foul, and that'll be his fifth, and he's leaving. The officials couldn't find the basketball. John Thompson had it. <laughs> seconds remain in this ball game another one just like this one Duke Kansas coming up next and as CBS Sports continues its road to the championship yeah I wasn't so sure it was a timeout Mike Krzyzewski's really doing a heck of a job down the ACC there was no time right Edwards foul yeah, I know both officials unsure but each coach grabs the guys and starts discussing. Sam Jefferson in the ball game, along with Tillman, Charles Smith, Winston, and McDonald for Georgetown. Lane at the line. Pretty confident for a 62% stroker. Well, he went over the line. Good call. Mickey Crowley's got it from the backcourt. Over the line. Mickey right on it. Lane violation against your own lane. <laughs> uh, John likes to score as anybody does to get the quick timeout. See if he can get his press set up. Smith. Rebound Pittsburgh. They may have lost it, did they? They got Charles Smith on Charles the reach. Pull the string a little bit. Charles Smith following his own shot. Four hands on it for Pitt. Of course, right in front of Mickey Crowley. I was looking at the feet to see if they hit the line. Now they're arguing about who the shooter is from the pit bench. Charles Smith of Georgetown, Bill, is just 6 of 16 from the line. And you got to attribute to the mix-up, the gimmick defenses, and Sean Miller has stayed at home on it. Charles Smith of Pittsburgh has 21 points. The lead is five. Don't forget how quickly Georgetown rushes the ball up and gets into their flunk. You can't relax if you're pit. Smith hits them both. We're under a minute. They got to get a bump for him. Forces a shot. Oh, oh way. No. It was a timeout. Is he a terrific competitor? Petty player as well. Smith has 17 points. There's 46 seconds remaining. The lead is four. You want anything? How about a light? Whoa. <laughs> uh, oh, Bob. Could you make that a Bud Light? If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Did you see? No. <laughs> Did you? No. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. There's a time to think about life insurance, and State Farm is there. I'm State Farm agent Mike Callen. The biggest reason young parents start thinking about life insurance are kids. Parents want someone who can explain life insurance and someone who knows how to listen, too, so it'll fit their needs. And as a family's needs grow and change, they want someone who will be there to keep that life insurance up to date. That's why they come to State Farm Agents. And like a good neighbor. And that's why they stay. State Farm is there. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Now there's a powerful new reason to follow your heart. 
the new 4.3 liter V6 available in S10 Blazer. 28% more power than before and 50% more torque. The new 4.3 liter V6, the biggest engine ever offered in Blazer's class. The heartbeat of America. Chevy S10 Blazer. That's today's Chevy truck. The sixth-ranked Blue Devils take on the Jayhawks, powered by the All-American force of Danny Manning, next on the home of the NCAA Championship. 45 seconds remain in the ballgame. 66-62. Pitt. Georgetown, one timeout. Pitt, two. Once again, finding Charles Smith as the outlet. That's been the key to the press. Very successful. Oh! Oh, what a heads-up play by Jerome Lane. Charles Smith trying to get back out. They say the coach has held on to him. Paul Evans talking to his bench. They don't need anything like that. Well, to now. You're not going to push him right back out and hurt your team, are you? But you don't want a technical. No. Coming off the bench, that's a two-shot technical. I'm sure the refs aren't looking at the bench. You got enough trouble with the ten guys on the floor. Jerome Lane will go to the line. Shooting one and one. Oh, did he get lucky? That was the skimmer. He now has 14 points. The fourth free throw shooter on the floor at 62%. Everybody else 75 or better. Tillman for three. Yes! <laughs> that was an impossible shot. Unbelievable. They never stop. Always in there. 24 seconds left. The lead is three. Let's go. I can't. I gotta cut the grass. Oh. Uh, maybe the morning will start. It'll start. Come here, I'll show you. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Only Toro offers the GTS guarantee. Your GTS engine will start on the first or second pull for two years, or Toro will fix it free. Hey, Eddie! Yeah, Dad? Come here! Oh, no. Oh, yes. Other Toro mowers start at only $299.95. Do you know who the best player in the game is? Me, Marge Blackman. And I'm way above the rim, demonstrating some serious hang time. Very serious. Do you know how I get up for my game? Do you know, do you know, do you know? That's right, Air Jordan, Air Jordan, Air Jordan. Mike, what's up? Oh, m money, money, why you wanna do that to me? Why you leave me hanging? Come on, I got it. Oh, Mike, man, that's cold, man. I'm just passing a day on my way to L.A. Gonna ride in a With the designed in sound of a Delco Electronics music system, now the best seat in the house is in your GM truck. Delco Electronics, it's who we are. Get a fully automatic 35mm Kodak camera, free, when you buy 10 rolls or more of Owens Corning pink fiberglass insulation. Four seconds remain in the game at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. The lead is three. Who do you foul? Lane, 61%, but that's not bad. Great free throw shooting team. Of course, the pressure now, they've got to gamble and go for the trap and give one. I'm sure that's what John's instructed them. I'd be watching for Charles Smith right now. Sam Jefferson on him. Smith does get the in inbound pass. Good ball movement. They don't Lane. need a shot. Oh, look at that effort by Sam Jefferson. And real sportsmanship, too, by Mickey Crowley. Great Working. hustle by Jefferson. Sure. Almost had the pass. He was all the way down floor, ran the 45 feet. Mickey Crowley doing a good job preventing an injury. You see the game clock. And Smith is tied. One of them. All right, Jackie. Wayne Bryan on the foul. Charles Smith will go to the line. He has 23 points, five rebounds, and four blocks. Two seconds remain in that game at Pauley Pavilion. 
Smith, 13 of 15 today from the line. Boy, he's got a beautiful trajectory. The form is excellent. That could close the door on John. Well, Smith not yet. Not yet now. Three pointers. Steal. Don't forget, a lot can happen in a couple of seconds. You've been watching it up to that 15 game. seconds remaining. They got to score quickly. Winston finds Charles Smith. This is for two. Rebound Jefferson. Oh, what a foul, Charles. Sam Jefferson going to the free throw line. Only a 45% free throw shooter. More importantly, the clock is now at four. That's so John with another timeout. Leads the country. The yep. unofficial timeout. Arizona UCLA going into overtime. <laughs> Chevrolet players of the game, Mark Tillman of Georgetown and Charles Smith of Pittsburgh. And a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. This is Sam Jefferson. Both clubs have to be alert, knowing the percentage. Oh. He's only a 43% free throw shooter. He struggles. That didn't look too bad. We'll be taking you out to Pauley Pavilion for the overtime of the Arizona UCLA game immediately oh. following this one. Perry McDonald, here we go. Here we go. Lane. And here comes the Pittsburgh bench. This is ugly. Ugly, ugly. No, no reason place, for this. No place for in college basketball. McDonald and Jerome Lane are still going at it over here in front of our bench. Now they're into the crowd. And I hope the crowd doesn't get involved. Well, Charles Smith is taking shots now. I'll tell you what. Bobby Martin still trying to go after it. Jerome Lane is right in front of us now. And they're finally separated. Dave Gavitt as a commissioner is powerless. In a sense, he needs the help of the ADs to put a stop to this. But knowing Dave, he's going to have to address this, and he will. It's now gotten to the point of street brawl, not basketball. No place for it in college basketball. And John Thompson's taking his team home. He says, that's it. They're leaving the floor. And I don't blame him. I don't care who started it, whether it's Rook. Who got the first blow in? There's no reason for that in college basketball. Yeah, but unfortunately, it's a, it's a terrible way to end the game. It, it sort of dampens Pitt's win. Well, the officials have declared that the game is over. Well, John, that's said he more like it. Back. Well, John said it was over. He took his team off the floor. The officials concurred with four seconds left for the safety of the players and the safety of the fans. I'll tell you what, though, ended. Timmy, John Thompson's got to do something. There's been too many of these, and Georgetown has been involved in them. I don't care how competitive they are or the opponent is. John has to control his team. There are too many incidents over the years where altercations have There's taken place. There's the shot place. to the back of the head. It was the shot to the back of the head to Lane, and he retaliated with a right. Now, Georgetown keeps their players on the bench, but it's just the case it happens too often. It's unnecessary. It's not basketball. It's not healthy. It's not the way the game is to be played. It was a cheap shot by Perry McDonald to the back of the head of Lane. Then Lane threw a punch. And it's, you have to control it as a coach. So with four seconds remaining in the ball game, they cancel it. Pitt gets the win by five. We now go to Pauley Pavilion, the UCLA on Arizona in overtime. For Bill Raftery, I'm Tim Brandt saying so long from Pittsburgh. Welcome those of you who